Isa sa pinaka-promising na field para sa ating mga anak ang tinatawag na STEM o Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Karaniwan natin itong naririnig sa mga anak nating malapit ng mag-senior high school sa ilalim ng K-12 education system ng bansa. Para nga ito sa mga batang nais magkaroon ng future career sa larangan ng siyensya at matematika. Kaya naman, nakakatuwa na maraming organisasyon ang nagtutulong-tulong upang mas mapaganda pa ang kalidad ng STEM education sa bansa. Ngayong araw, samahan ninyo kami sa isang event na inorganize ng Unilab Foundation para sa patuloy na development ng STEM education sa Pilipinas. Dito lang yan sa DOSTV, Science for the People. Sa pangunguna ng Unilove Foundation STEM.ph, isinagawa kamakailan ang Pinoy Scientist Luncheon Meeting kung saan pinag-usapan ang mga posibilidad at kakulangan sa STEM o mas kilala bilang Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Education sa Pilipinas. Ilan sa mga layunin ng programa ay ang pagpapabuti ng STEM education sa mga professionals at practitioners, pagkilala ng mga problema sa advocacy campaign, teachers empowerment, learners engagement, STEM facilities at policy building. Higit sa lahat ay ang mga solusyon at commitment ng mga students, learners at scientists para suportahan ang lumalagong programa ng STEM. Okay, or we call it STEM PH Gathering of Champions. It's where we convene our champions of the STEM education in the Philippines. Now, number one objective is uh, we want to introduce Unilab Foundation to them that we are now uh, doing this advocacy. So basically, ginagawa natin is gusto nating tulungan ang ating government and the education sector para mas ipromote pa ang uh, STEM education sa Pilipinas. Uh, second, uh, since nagsistart pa lang yung program, nagsisimula pa lang tayo, gusto natin pag gumawa tayo ng programa, yun talaga yung kailangan at mag-a-address siya ng isang uh, problem. So we want to gather as many opinion as possible at the same time recommendation. So this program is really arranged to pick up those uh, recommendations, that the minds of young people. So we have a good mix here of students, teachers, as well as practitioners in the industry so that they can give us recommendations on how we can uh, finalize this program so that it will be more effective. Actually, ito yung kauna-unahang event pa lang na nilaunch ni STEM PH kasi kakasimulang mula pa lang namin. Uh, dito tayo nagsimula na uh, starting early, uh, late last year hanggang simula ng taong ito. Uh, si Unilab Foundation magsisimula na talaga siyang magkampanya para sa STEM education. So going back to your question, ano pang i-expect natin? Uh, for sure, it will be an exciting years ahead. So uh, this coming October, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng science uh, or educators forum for uh, science and innovation. And in fact, next week, magpapadala tayo ng mga educators channel STEM Educators Champion sa Boston, Massachusetts, kung saan ito ay benchmarking tour. Kakamihan kasi sa mga uh, nag, 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 mga practitioner natin ngayon or some of our teachers 
uh, nagtuturo tayo or nag-advocate tayo ng STEM, pero hindi pa natin nakita ano ba ang mataas na standard? Ano bang ginagawa ng ibang bansa? So we're bringing them to Boston where you can find the top-notch universities, science universities. So we go there and bringing these teachers para makita nila, ah, ito yung ginagawa. And we can probably bring it here in the country as well. So in that tour, we are bringing a very good mix, a very good group. So we have from Philippine Science High School, the premier uh, science high school in the Philippines. We have from uh, Department of Education. We are bringing their curriculum, science curriculum developer. We are also bringing uh, the, the one in charge for the National Science and Technology Fair, doing the researches of the kids because we want also to uh, kind of help them improve the process. And then we also have from DOST, Dr. Lilia Habacon, the head of the Philippine Science High School, is actually joining us. And hopefully, we can have Yusek Lorna Dino from the Department of Education. So if you can see, these are all these people who are actually the key players in STEM education in the Philippines. And we want them to benchmark in Boston and, and see what they're doing there. And again, uh, going back to the Philippines, uh, bring it here. Why reinvent the wheel, diba? Kung meron ng effective na ginagawa, let's just bring it here. Uh, STEM education, I think um, the, the major challenge now is that, one, relatively bago pa kasi yung STEM education sa Pilipinas. Two years ago lang siya, introduced ng Department of Education through K-12. In fact, sa paglilibot-libot namin, yung mga parents, hindi pa nga nila alam ano ba yung STEM? <laughs> or, or the students, merong, ah, hindi ko actually alam, pero naka-enroll na ako sa STEM strand kasi nandito yung barkada ko. So I think that's the first major challenge. Ipaintindi sa public na ang STEM ay ito. Hindi lang siya actually subjects, but actually it's a, it's a necessity that we need to understand and really prepare our young people for the jobs of the future, for the technology that's up coming to now because again the fourth industrial revolution is already here and we need stem skills to prepare them right so kailangan natin yun so that's the major one and second we find out that in uh, focus on STEM education is that in introduce natin system without uh, na hindi pa tayo ganun ka prepare when it comes to facility when it comes to teachers so gusto natin i-push pa ng konte yung teacher training natin na tuturo ng STEM at at the same time if we can support them in improving the facilities that would actually facilitate the learning of STEM related subjects UNILA Foundation through STEM PH program we aim to be the lead convenor so we won't necessarily do specific programs but we want to convene groups and people so that we can work together to advance STEM education. A Unilab is highly supportive of the advocacy of Unilab Foundation being uh, one of the leading pharmaceutical company here in the Philippines. Uh, Unilab, our mother company, is really really supportive in doing this one. Oh, DOST, DOST TV to, to, to be specific would be very very helpful. One, DOST you are, you are one of the department of DOST that's like, I mean, one who has the mandate to really advocate for science and technology in the Philippines. And through your uh, TV network, uh, we can bring this advocacy all over the country. So not just encouraging teachers or empowering teachers or educators, but at the same time, bringing STEM education in, into the household. How can, if, if manunood yung nanay at ma-showcase natin maganda yung STEM, then sasabihin niya, then I want to encourage my son or my daughter to take STEM education. Or baka siya may interesado din, oh, ah, cool, future na pala ay computer, so kailangan ko din matutong mag-computer, something like that. Because for, for us, para ma-change natin at ma-revolutionize ang buong STEM education in the Philippines, we need the cooperation of everyone. And through the Bayanihan spirit, that's one of the mantra of Unilab Foundation, we work through Bayanihan and we work with you guys at the USTV to bring this campaign and this advocacy to possibly every household in the Philippines. And we are very thankful for, you know, helping us with that. Nagkwento rin si Dr. Reyna Reyes sa mga Pinoy scientists and STEM champions sa mga kapanapanabik niyang karanasan at hilig sa siyensya. Bukod pa rito, ay inilahad din niya ang katayuan ng STEM sa Pilipinas. Um, STEM education in the Philippines, um, as we all know, has a lot to be improved. Um, actually, pinag-usapan namin yan dito sa event nga ngayon sa workshop, and doon ako sa learners na group, and mga lumabas na main gaps in our STEM education is, one, um, yung pagturo natin ng science and uh, naputuro natin yung science ay masyadong focus sa memorization. 
of facts na parang multiple choice, fill in the blanks, and then pag tama yung sagot mo, magaling ka sa science. But science is not the memorization of facts, di ba? Science is about learning about the world, observing the world, doing experiments. So we need more of parang integrating activities and then yung parang critical thinking and scientific process also in uh, when we teach science in the classroom and also outside the classroom malaki yung malawak yung problema maraming ano di ba maraming components at the same time marami ring ways to attack it di ba and for me very critical yung role ng teacher kasi siya yung nagfa-facilitate nung learning ng students and so meron tayong mga ideas and proposals to to um, empower the teachers and and kung nga to make this to make science parang more fun and uh, and um, activity based maybe we can also parang yun nga, parang model this with parang um, activities na that the teachers can parang do in their own classrooms and also um, to model also the values so for example na we actually encourage questions, encourage curiosity rather than um, parang um, hushing it or parang smart shaming. Um, so, madami madaming factors. And um, the good thing is, yun nga, marami ring ways to parang to help. May role din yung mga scientists um, because um, na-identify din yung gaps between yung hindi makarelate yung mga students to the science lessons and they don't see na how it's applied and also how yun nga, a science is actually a career and that, that you can actually become a scientist. So, meron kaming mga ideas and for example, my project na Pinoy Scientists is we highlight, just like it's a DOSTV, di ba? we highlight mga Filipino scientists, their profiles, what they do and how they work na relatable to more Filipinos and to younger Filipinos. And then we hope to bring more Filipino scientists to the schools. And then there's also this parang hope to connect scientists with teachers, di ba? So that teachers have a community na and um, that they can also parang communicate with scientists. And then scientists can also learn how to parang teach better <laughs> uh, from the teachers. Uh, gusto ko makita, what I really imagine is um, uh, is the situation where all kids parang are curious about science, are not intimidated, and they are parang, and if they are really interested, they could see themselves as becoming scientists in the future. So there are many ways, and um, there are many ways you can make that happen for more and more Filipinos. I mean, um, for some Filipinos, of course, nandiyan na tayo, pero madami tayo eh. So we have to para increase that for, for more of us. Very critical yung role ng media and communications that was also identified. And so we scientists parang, we usually work at the universities, they in the labs. Um, but yun nga, uh, to reach out to more people, uh, the OSTV and other partners are really uh, critical so that we can bring our message and then that other people can get to know us also through now of course social media the internet but also tv and uh, radio and uh, all um, parang channels galing sa iba't ibang perspektibo ng mga mag-aaral guro at dalubhasa sa sari rin ang opinion at kasagutan na inihain ng mga professional sa pagpapatuloy ng lumalaking STEM education Since it is in its first year, it is in its infancy because um, there are, first is there are a lot of problems. One is the course guide itself. There are some errors and these are the areas that have to be addressed. Second, it's too long and it's quite too advanced for the high, for the high school students. One is in the computations. There were errors in computations. And then there are some concepts which are not really clear. I do it on my own and I have my own references and I have a lot of books and at the same time since uh, I'm a scientist in Unilab so I can supplement it of my experience. One, since we're in a STEM, I think um, the government can help the schools by providing funds 
for buying new instruments because these are the budding scientists. They can, if they will be exposed to the good instrumentation, they can expand their knowledge and research. So the vision, since the vision of the government is globalization, I expect my students to be global. They should be admitted in several universities in the U.S., in the U.K., and I'm, I am I was instrumental of bringing you there, of bringing them there. Um, Action for Economic Reforms is a policy analysis and advocacy organization that focuses on three areas. One is fiscal policy, so this involves tax policies. Um, second is industrial policy, where education policy is included, and finally. Um, transparency policy or the freedom of information. Um, in terms of industrial policy and um, education policy, we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, possible incentives are, are, uh, that uh, industry can have if they accept a trainer uh, training um, uh, students and learners to, to, to be trained in their companies. So that's one. But we also have a broader education and economic development policy where we were, were together with many groups. We also want to push for uh, gov what we call government industry education coordination. Um, this means that you know, with greater coordination and collaboration, um, certain things are sorted out. For instance, in the in the design of curriculum and in the planning of, of human resource development, um, the needs, the actual needs of the community and the industry are taken into consideration. And, and also that uh, whatever technology there is uh, produced from the, the education and academic institutions are fed to industry and vice versa. Like industry is able to provide technology for instruction purposes in the educational um, institutions. Oh, Filipino scientists have a lot uh, to contribute to uh, not only STEM education, but also to general uh, economic development. Um, uh, Filipino scientists will serve as role models for our students and learners. Uh, we have well-known Filipino scientists, not only in the country, but all over the world. And, and, and that's a, a big encouragement for our youth, particularly, to, to go into STEM areas. Um, Filipino scientists uh, uh, can enrich uh, uh, the instruction materials in the, in, in the schools and, and, and universities. They can also uh, be, you know, enga uh, engaging uh, the community and, and, and therefore um, developing uh, a much healthier uh, interaction among science, you know, the science and non-science communities. Um, Filipino scientists um, also has, uh, they have a lot to, uh, to contribute in terms of economic development, like their research, you know, the, the things that they do can uh, help develop industry, can help develop skills, and ultimately that, that will redound to uh, uh, economic growth. In the near future, uh, we, uh, we hope that STEM education can really cater to what's needed, right? What's needed by the community, ano yung kailangan natin? So kung saan tayo may pagkukulang, yun ang dapat napupunuan. Uh, STEM education should be rooted to what the community needs, what the country needs. And ultimately, uh, to be able to address those needs as well as to be able to progress forward. So our STEM education um, should be tailored, uh, you know, should be able to address current problems as well as address the challenge of growing, right? Uh, we have to progress from where we are right now. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ako si Nico Spanyaranda para magbigay ng weather update ngayong umaga. 
Mainit pa rin na panahon yung naasahan natin uh, ngayon, especially dito sa Luzon. Uh, makita natin dito na talagang walang kaulap-ulap halos ang uh, dito sa area ng Luzon. Pero itong uh, makita natin ang uh, mga band of clouds o itong mga lupon ng mga kaulapan, ayan po ang uh, mga kaulapan associated sa Intertropical Convergence Zone o ITZZ. Nakapalibot po yan dito sa area ng uh, katimugang bahagi ng bansa, ang uh, Visayas at Mindanao kaya naman. Doon po makakaranas ng mga ilang mga pag-ulan at thunderstorms uh, sa Pilipinas o sa ating bansa. Ngayon dito sa ating uh, regional outlook, Luzon, of course, sabi nga natin, uh, rain showers lang pero maliit na posibilidad. Mostly po hapon sa mga kabundukan at uh, especially just sa Cordillera pero kokonti pa rin nga. Pero meron din po dito sa areas ng eastern section ng Luzon, Aurora, Quezon at Kabikulan may mga rain showers tayo. Uh, afternoon thunderstorm po dito sa Mimaropa area, Palawan, mas marami pong uh, chance ng thunderstorm dito po sa area ng southern na Palawan. At uh, dahil po dyan, 36 degrees po ang inaasahan pa rin natin dito sa Metro Manila, mataas, mainit. At ang ilang pong mga bahagi ng uh, Luzon, uh, Tugagaraw po, mas mataas ang inaasahan. Of course, sa Central Luzon, meron din tayong mataas na inaasahan na temperatura, mga around 36 to uh, greater than 36 degrees po. 70 to 26 po, Baguio, mild temperatures, pero of course, mainit po, 17 Pero maibsan po ang uh, ating uh, uh, pakiramdam da, pag doon po pa rin sa mga kabundukan. Okay, so sa nabinggit natin yung ITCZ, nakaka po dito sa Visayas, Mindanao. Kaya naman meron tayong mga uh, kalat-kalat na mga thunders, uh, well, uh, mga pulupulong uh, rain showers at mga taas na chance ng thunderstorms ngayong hapon at gabi. Especially po dito sa Mindanao area at uh, southern Palawan. The rest of Visayas po, meron po mga rain showers dyan at may afternoon thunderstorms. Ingat-ingat lang po tayo dyan sa uh, pag meron na pong mga uh, buhos ng ulan dahil may kalakasan din po ito at pwedeng magdulot ng mga flash floods. At uh, of course, eastern Visayas, Samar Leyte area ay uh, marami pong uh, mga rain showers. Typical po this time of the year. 26 to 30 degrees, mas mababa po ang temperatura. 29 degrees, Tacloban, Iloilo City ay 25 to 30. Uh, dito po sa area ng Mindanao, mas mainit po ng konti. Uh, 25 to 34 degrees, Sambuanga at Metro Davao. Okay, so ngayon po wala na po tayong nakataas na gale warning sa extreme northern Luzon. Pero nanatili pong moderate to rough ang area po ng Batanes at Babuyan Group of Islands. Samantalang moderate po ang silangang uh, mga seaboards natin sa silangan ng uh, ating bansa. Slight to moderate naman po uh, sa pangapagitan ng isla. At uh, dito po naman sa West Philippine Sea ay slight to moderate din ang pag-alo ng karagatan. Sa ating 3-day outlook, uh, Metro Manila mananatili po nga uh, meron lang uh, posibilidad ng rain showers uh, hanggang po uh, Sunday and in uh, expected po by uh, Sunday maari pong mas ma uh, konti din po ang ating uh, mga mararanasang uh, rain showers 36 degrees pong uh, bukas and then 36 degrees na rin po pagdating po ng linggo dito naman sa Baguio City uh, inaasahan pa rin ang uh, uh, slightly uh, warmer uh, temperatures uh, 17 to 26 po magpapatuloy hanggang sa Sunday. And of course, meron pa rin uh, rain shower or thunderstorm pagdating po ng hapon dyan po sa mga kabundukan ng Cordillera. Okay, sa Legaspe City, uh, meron tayong mga rain showers dyan dahil nasa eastern seaboard po ang uh, syudad na yan. At uh, 24, uh, 25 to 30 degrees at uh, pagdating po ng uh, Sunday, mas mainit po ng konti, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Metro Cebu, uh, meron po tayong uh, uh, mataas sa chance ng mga rain showers ngayong uh, buong araw. At uh, possible uh, thunderstorm din po mamayang hapon hanggang, uh, buk hanggang Sabado rather. At uh, itong uh, ating uh, uh, pagdating po ng Sunday ay uh, inaasahan natin na mas maganda ang uh, panahon. Okay, sa Metro Davao, ang uh, ngayon po ay uh, meron tayong inaasahang mga pag-ulan pero huhupa po yan bandang tanghali at magre-resume po ang mga thunderstorms mostly po malapit sa mga kabundukan uh, pagdating po ng hapon o gabi. 25 to 34 degrees Celsius. Pagdating po ng Sunday, mas nabawasan po ang mga rain showers. 25 to 34 degrees Celsius. 
Ang sunrise po, kanina 5.32 at mamaya po lulubog ang araw, 6.14 ng gabi. Yan po ang latest weather update sa mga oras na ito. Maraming salamat. Si Nikos Peñaranda nag-uulat. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSMBFI Building, 318 Santolan Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citev.net. Sa tulong-tulong nga nating pagpapaunlad ng ating education system, lalo na sa larangan ng siyensya at teknolohiya, tiyak ang magandang kinabukasan para sa ating kabataan. Maraming salamat po sa pagsama sa amin ngayong linggo sa araw-araw nating kwentuhan tungkol sa World of Science. Ako po si Jel Miranda at ito po ang DOS-TV, Science for the People.